What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another album review in my KISS series. We've already knocked out the self-titled album and Hotter Than Hell, which brings us in to Dress to Kill. And this is an album that I feel, unlike the other two, can stand alone from Alive for the most part. It is a solid studio album you could listen to and if Alive never existed, this would still be a solid entry in the discography and without further ado let's get rolling with it my number 10 my most controversial and that will be rock and roll all night it just is a simple song that without the live punch just in the studio doesn't fit doesn't feel right it's an anthem but not a studio anthem this is a live anthem very simple song and it doesn't go through well on the studio version. Still a good song, still enjoyable. And I want to preface a lot of these, even songs that are at my bottom, are still very enjoyable to me. But as a whole, they are the lowest of the album. So don't think just because something is my 10 means I hate the song. It's just the lowest on that album. And I think this album is great start to finish. Rolling right into number nine, Two Timer. This is a typical Gene Simmons song. Very heavy, very slow, very drudgy. And I like it. It's strong. It doesn't have a live version to base itself off of. And I think it stands alone on its own in the studio. And this is a good era of Gene in my opinion. And there's a lot of good Gene on this album. Which goes into number 8, Anything For My Baby. Where you don't just get good Gene, you get good everybody. Good harmonies, good chorus. It's upbeat, kind of how I like my Kiss, more upbeat, but... It's just kind of poppy in a way, lyrically, that it kind of just bounces as it moves along. And I like the song, but it's just a little too poppy sounding for this album. And that takes me to my number seven, which is by far the most poppy song on this album, and that is Come On and Love Me. Lyrically, it is a pop song. Beat-wise, it is a pop song. But God damn it, is it catchy. And we're hitting number six, where I think, it seems like in all these albums, there's a bottom four, a middle, and then a top five. And it's no different with this album. This six kind of hits the separating point where the songs get that kiss feel, a heavier feel, an energetic feel, a thematic feel that they, that every, it's all kiss encapsulated in these next ones. And I think this song leads it right into it. That's Lover All I Can. It's aggressive vocally with Paul. It's a little more, uh, pack some punch to it. Good riff. And that's what you want from Kiss. You want a good riff, you want good harmonies, and you want some energy. And you get that from Lover All I Can. Which brings us to our top five. And coming in at number five, I absolutely adore the live version. But on the studio version, we're getting She at number five. It, it, it was lower on my list. But I had this on earlier to get an idea of where I wanted to put these songs and I was driving and it fit my drive so well. They're harmonizing, the way it just kind of flows together, you got that nice little riff and when I was in the car driving, it, it was at my eight, eight or nine in my head just off the top of my head, thinking about it comparatively but when it was in my speakers and I was just cruising down the road, I had a fun and enjoyable time with it and liked it a lot more than I remember. Number five is She. Number four, we've already talked about Gene Simmons. Now I think this is a good album for him. And number four is Ladies in Waiting. This is a prime Gene song. Again, dark, dreary, but you've got his strong voice, strong chorus, good rhythm it's got the same kiss gene simmons themes that you always get in his songs that's what we like him for and i think this song encapsulates it very well but now we are into the top three we have room service rock bottom and getaway and number three room service and i think this is a great entry song to the album this is a great number one track it has the energy it has the themes of Kiss songs, it's got Paul Stanley coming through. Good riff, makes you want to move around when you hear it. Catchy chorus will get stuck in your head, that's what you want with Kiss. 
and I think that really kicks Dress to Kill off. Everything with this album feeds off that song. Very strong entry. That's why it's my top three. And now we're down to Rock Bottom and Getaway. Will it be powerful Paul Stanley or powerful Peter Chris taking this one? And number two is Getaway. It is catchy. It's not the most Kiss song on this album, but it's catchy with its little bouncy riff. Peter Chris is going hard. It gets stuck in your head. The chorus is catchy. Lyrically, it flows well. And it's just, it, it is a fun time is the best way I can describe Getaway. And I've always liked it since the first time I heard it. It gets stuck in your head the way the lyrics flow. I'm a big guy with how words flow together in a rhythm. And the way they flow with Peter Chris's raspy voice, it all kind of ties together. But it doesn't tie together nearly as well as my number one rock bottom, which is one of my favorite Kiss songs of all time. Only downside of this, that intro is a little bit long in the studio one. But when it finally does that fade out of the guitars, everything's coming with a punch to the face. You're getting rock bottom. You're getting Paul Stanley yelling at you. You're getting heavy Peter Chris drums, heavy guitars, solid solo, sick bass line. It's all coming at you with rock bottom. It encapsulates this album and the Kiss feel and what is to come with Kiss. Boom. That is Dressed to Kill from Worst to Best. Let me know down below what your ranking is. We've got the other albums coming soon. I don't know if I'm going to do a live or not. That's a tough one to rank. But we got the new rankings coming out. I promise you they'll be coming. Keep on the lookout. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know all your thoughts down below. I love you guys. Peace.